John Wedger for tonight's episode of Crime Theory. Ron successfully moved his PC earlier, uh, but now needs to move it back because the camera won't bloody stretch to it. So apologies there. I also have a bit of a banger of a, a, a headache, so if I'm not as high energy as usual, I apologize. But John, how has your week been? What have you been up to? to fill us in. Uh, yeah, busy, busy. I'm I'm sort of working flat out at the moment. Um, so on that front, a lot's happening. Um, the social media stuff has gone absolutely crazy. I've sort of reinvented yeah. myself, awesome. gone back out. It's gone mad. It's just um, yeah, an amazing amount of things coming up. We're, we're working on uh, our documentary Redemption, and that is really doing well. So we're um, two episodes in now. Um, we're, we're hopefully filming our third episode next week. And I want to thank anyone who's contributed via the Indiegogo and the Patreon. Um, you've enabled me to, to carry on. And because of the amount of information I'm getting in, I'm back sort of doing the street podcast again, um, going out and interviewing people. So hopefully I'll have one next week and I'm going to be uh, going to Scotland. Um, oh, awesome. To, to speak out and what we got tonight um this, this is your neck of the woods my friend and uh it, it, it's different it's different this is um uh we always wonder we all scratch our heads and wonder how does the system allow this how does it allow this abuse why are there cover-ups of course at of what course. level we always say you know oh it's high up we're going high up today Okay. We're going high up, and uh, this will explain a part of the cabal tonight. Uh, um, you you it, never fail to uh, deliver, uh, John, so I'm sure tonight will be no different. Make sure you uh, slap a like on this uh, stream, people, and make sure you're subscribed. And, uh, yeah, who are we talking about tonight, John? Right, we're talking about uh, one of the aristocracy from your part of the world, Sir Nicholas Fairburn QC. Okay, uh, okay. Right. Let's explain who this guy is. Born the 24th of December, 1933. He died, so we, he's fair play. We can give this guy a good kick in. He died the 19th of February, 1995. Nicholas Fairburn uh, went on to become probably the, the, the top lawyer in, right. in right. Scotland. He uh, became a Tory MP. He was an MP for, for Perthshire. We're going to go into this. It, this guy, you um, you might, what some of the stuff he's got involved with, you, okay. you might well have heard about him. Uh, but, we're, but we're, you know, we're not picking low-hanging fruit here. We're, we're going right to the top of the tree with this guy. All right, I, all right. I was, I was approached by survivors of, of a kid's home in Perth called Fornithi home and for Nithi children's home was a protestant um, i'm going to turn up my volume a bit yeah that's right yeah was a protestant um home for girls right um it was seen as a respite center for girls one woman uh she was a victim of abuse during the 1970s in this place she decided to put online what had happened to her? She thought maybe one or two. She's been inundated with hundreds and hundreds of, of survivors uh, coming yeah. forward. And some of them are reported, well, most of them are reported the most horrific abuse. Uh, and we scratch our heads thinking, how does this go on? People we've spoken about in the past, Brian Fields, Sydney Cook, right? They come from the lower classes. They come from the care system. Yeah, um, but they have these connections, though, right? I mean, that's that's the thing. They're all connected through this web. It's, we're we're, we're, we're going to join the dots tonight. And, and also, we're, we're going to be looking at... Years ago, a guy came to me, and he was the son of um, Lord Montague Bewley. Okay? Uh, the name was Robert Montague. I'll put his name out there because he's written a book about this, and he knows. Okay. Uh, and he said to he his book is all about the abuse he endured um as a result of going to Eton, the uh the the, the factory that produces more uh posh um prime ministers than any other. I think about thirteen prime ministers okay. Okay. have been dished out of Eton, the you know, the fee paying 
school that sort of lines people up for Oxford and Cambridge yeah. in the shadow of Windsor Castle and um, famous for the prestige, uh, prestige shall we prestige, say prestige the fagging system and uh, and he turned around to me and he said um, look John you know you you help the, the people from the, the lower and the working classes but when when they come forward and they report abuse, they tend to be, uh, at least initially, listened to by the police. Uh, and maybe it don't go anywhere, but they initially do get their their uh, statements taken and they're interviewed. He said, when you come from the ruling classes like me, you don't even get as far as the police. He said, yeah. please, spare a thought for us. And uh, again, we've got to look at abusers. Fairburn was an abuser. Um and we're going to go into, we're going to delve into him and his connections. This is probably the most revealing podcast I've ever done. But we're also going to look at who he was. And uh, we're going to draw parallels. So he was rejected by his mother at birth. Okay. What sort of a woman rejects their, their child at birth? Um, the mother was described as an aristocrat. Okay. But what does that, what does that even mean? An aristocrat. People conjure up these things of being high society and, uh, a, a bit arty or whatever it might be. But this woman, whether she's an aristocrat or not, she's a, an incredibly cold-hearted, selfish individual. And she yeah, sure. rejected her own child. Uh, his father was a prominent UK psychoanalyst. Again, we we see psychoanalysts crop up. And what, well, the main one was a guy called Kinsey, who, right. who wrote the Kinsey Report. It was a psychoanalyst who who wrote a report, um, uh, along with, who's the other guy? Um, Dahl, uh, something, that, no, no, not Dahl. Um, oh, the famous, uh, he, he was, is someone on to become an MP? Uh, 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 come to me in a minute. And he was Freud, Freud, Freud. Sigmund Freud. You know, Sigmund Freud, uh, again, did some very questionable, borderline paedophilic uh, reports. And, and so this guy, Kinsey, Kinsey, wrote a report on, on about um, uh, young three-year-old girls achieving an orgasm. I mean, and, and his his work, Kinsey's work, is still used in some of the social services training manuals. So, yeah, so yeah. All, all of it, all, already, if we look at what happened to Brian Fields, rejected at birth, yeah. and, and something that, you know, our, our friend and, and prominent um, child murderer profiler, Corinne Hutzterbott says that in order to get to the crux of the matter, you've got you've got to look at these people and and see uh, what their relationship was like with their parents, uh, mainly their mother. Yeah, where it's and if, yeah, the mother. So um, Brian Fields again, uh, mother was a prostitute, uh, taken away from his mother, went on to become an incredibly sexually damaged individual. Right. So and and Brian Fields was put in a care. Well. Like um, Robert Montague said to me, we're put into posh fee-paying schools. They're no different to the care system. Yeah. Yeah, the, the atrocities that go on are, are... They just go on and on throughout history. It's shocking. So we, we're going to look at what happened to him. He, he then was placed in a fee-paying school, Loretto School. Now, we had the IICSA, the Independent Child Sexual Abuse Inquiry in the, in the UK. Scotland had the Scottish um, Sexual Abuse Inquiry run by a lady, Smith. And we're going to go on about this woman in a minute. These are all barristers, right? So Nicholas Fairborn went on to become a barrister. He went to Loretto School. Loretto School was one of, of a few schools that, that come under the scrutiny of the Scottish Child Abuse Inquiry, right? But every other school was slated monumentally. Uh, and a school gained its position on, on this list because of the abuse that went on. Loretto School is a very, very posh uh, fee-paying school where the elite is a bit like the Scottish Eton, we yeah. could say. Okay. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and and what happened is it's in Musselburgh. And uh, when Lady Smith did the report on it, and we, we're going to give her a good kick in as well in a minute, she right. turned around and wouldn't say any negative about it. And she actually, all the comments that she posted on her report, she cut and pasted from their website. Oh, so, yeah. right, right. So can we just think about this one? Survivors of, of the abuse at Loretto School, we're going to go on about what they endured, right? 
there, there was cases of children set on fire. Set there on was cases of genital mutilation. There was cases of gang beatings. The R word, nearly the R word. Oh, right, not. right. Beds urinated and defecated on, right, uh, by by other uh, well, not just by other other boys, but also members of staff, right, um, and and general s abuse of boys, right. Older boys were encouraged to do it to the younger boys. And how, now, long, that's, how long did that go on for? Like, what what's the? Uh, the, the I think I think there's the, the the time scale of of this inquiry from the sixties through to the nineties, right now. That's what great. we look at, th this is what survivors of this school, right? Lady Smith refused to put anything negative and she cut and pasted comments. So do you really think that Loretto's school, when it, when it's selling itself online, on their online school brochure, would, would put on it about, at this school, we generously mutilate boys. We set them on fire. We are them. Yeah. We give them oh, and urinate on their beds. Oh. Of course not. She refused. She refused to put anything on there. Now, now this lad, so Nicholas Fairburn, right, uh, born into high society, a mother is some weird nutcase aristocrat who abandons him, rejects him. So this boy has instantly got uh, demons of rejection and abandonment. We know what happens there. He goes to a well-renowned, um, infamous, upper-class society school where genital mutilations, gang beatings, R's, yeah. urinating on beds, defecation, kids being set on fire, thrashings, beatings are commonplace. So we can only imagine. I mean, how do you what, cover up people being set on fire? It, it's kind of mind-blowing. But they did. But they did. And then when it's given to a government official, a QC, someone of high legal esteem to look into this, she... She was in place for eight years looking into this inquiry. Heaven knows what her wage was. So she's probably given an open checkbook. She was criticised for, um, for for going way over the budget, right? In eight years, she did not find one recommendation put forward to change how children are dealt with in care, not one. When you look at the, the, the UK one, the English one, yeah. Ireland and, and, uh, and whatever you are, there was pages and pages, and five of them recommendations were due to my evidence. So power here, but um, yeah, well, well but, done. Yeah, and that was to do with safeguarding children in care. She did not find one. And bear in mind the evidence of what we've just had: genital mutilations, kids set fire, bloody bloody. So blood. how how is how have they managed to conceal all that? Take us through. Well, well, we're we're going to get to this, and okay. and this is the bottom end of the wedge, right? He then attends Edinburgh University, the Scottish equivalent, yeah. of Oxford, I presume. Uh, he becomes Scotland's youngest ever QC. Right, again, we're going to draw parallels here. If we look at allegations that were made against our Home Secretary under Thatcher's government, Leon Britton, he became yeah. the youngest ever, um, what was it, the youngest ever Home Secretary, right? Yeah. Uh, at uh, a very young age. But again, many, many allegations are made against this guy. Yeah. So uh, 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 then he gets, in 1974, he's elected as an MP for the Tory party and he gets Perth and Kinross, right? He becomes, in 1979, Margaret Thatcher's um, Solicitor General for Scotland. So he becomes a Premier Solicitor General for Thatcher's government in 1979. Yeah, and he paved his way and he's just climbing the ladder. Right, he become a Tory MP, and uh, and a vociferous opponent opponent of gay rights. Right, so we we got bear this in All mind. Right. You must. We're going to revisit this in a minute. Right, so he becomes a Tory MP. Uh, uh, you know, in 1979, 1974, 1979, he's made this Solicitor General. Uh, he's an outspoken vociferous opponent of gay rights. Now we're going deep. Now, okay, during it during his time in Thatcher's cabinet. He has a, a long-standing affair with no other than Esther Ranson. Esther Ranson, okay. Now, Esther Ranson. What did Esther Ranson set up during her time, during this period of time? Uh, Childline, 
Child Lane. Child Lane, okay, yep. Damn. And bear in mind, I've said this many times on, on Mr. Sean Atwood's show, that when I was a detective in one of the busiest child abuse units in the UK, we only only ever, in the time I was there, the years I was there, we only ever had one re referral from Child Lane, one. Yeah. Thousands of kids would have rang, one. Right, so bear in mind, we've got to think of this. He also made and got away with several sexual advances towards Margaret Thatcher. This is a very okay. sick puppy, this guy, you know. Um, he also had such leverage. He was he would try and manipulate the press, and he wanted to pre prevent them from having like the the freedom and the autonomy that they had. So yeah. even back then, he tried to curtail the press. Right, so he wasn't a fan of the press, but why would you do that? And we're going to find out. We're going to find out. Okay. Okay. Right now, um, the, the Scotland had a, a dame and, and Leslie. I don't know what her role was, but she was a dame and she was high up in, in in Scottish politics. And she made an allegation that during uh, BBC Four's current affairs show, any questions? Right, uh, Fairburn was groping her, sexually groping her during the, the, the live show, right? She actually went out to speak out about this and he tried to sort of get it all sort of omitted from the press, right? Okay. He was asked, so he went, he, he came to this, this high prominence in 1979. That didn't last long because in 1982, Thatcher was so professionally embarrassed by this guy's shenanigans, right? He, he was asked to step down as Solicitor General due to his, uh, you know, his, his role as a notorious yeah, adulterer. Promiscuous ways, yeah. Promiscuous ways, right. So I just want to recap with this guy because I don't want nothing to slip through the net. So we, we look oh, at his early go years. Ahead. Oh. Damaged. Oh, oh incredibly John, emotionally damaged. Damaged. Sorry, John, I lost you for a second there. Carry on. Yeah, a mostly damaged individual goes um, uh, abandoned by his mother, ends up a... a, a infamous school for for child abuse um in which i no doubt he was was both a victim and a perpetrator no evidence of that but i'm just saying um very prominent active outspoken uh it says a vociferous opponent of gay rights yeah. had an affair with esther ranson who sets up child line a well-known adulterer made sex advances to thatcher wow worked that one out uh groped other female mps a bit like Savile, you know, where he was groping girls on top of the pops. He was doing this on, on any questions, uh, yeah. BBC Four's um, uh, thing, right? However, right, there's missing times here. There's missing periods of time. So All right. we've got, we've gone straight from him leaving Edinburgh University, straight to him joining, uh, becoming a QC and joining Thatcher's cabinet. There's missing years, and this is the period of the 1960s when he's in his heyday. So in All 1960... Right. He was chairman of Edinburgh's left wing Traverse Theatre, right? Traverse Theatre was an active um, radical theatre for Edinburgh's gay community. Yep. Now, I'm he was I'm chairman of that, right? Theater. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is a major conflict when he gets into, into power. So he's at, he, he, in his 60s, he's in a left wing pro-gay activist theatre group, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. He was an active and honorary member of a radical gay liberation organization in Scotland called the SMG, the Scottish Minorities Group. So this guy, it, it seems to be a different beast to what we get in the 70s. So in the 60s, this guy is very active, very outspoken, not against gays, but pro-gays. So the okay. inference here is this man is gay, right? And he's he's going hell for leather for the 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 up and coming left wing pro gay because the, the, the you know the political um, environment would have been landscape would have been very different uh, towards homosexuality back then uh, and I think it was probably still a, illegal um, okay. right so he was uh, an honorary member of, and and a very active honorary member of this SMG the Scottish Minorities Group who was running the Scottish Minorities Group a guy called Ian Dunn. So he was in close with Ian Dunn. Now, Ian Dunn might not mean anything, but just prior to this guy, Fairburn, joining the Tory party, in 1974, Ian Dunn sets up Pi, a oh. paedophile information exchange. Oh, 
man, that is grim. Mate, we 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 can we we can see where this is going. Yeah, um, is... but wow. there there was there was problems with the Traverse Theatre because Fairburn was constantly making sexual advances to young male actors. What is going on with this guy? Well, I think we know. You know, but and the next thing is is this massive sort of um, uh, you know, uh, woman eyes and all that. But a decade before, very active. Uh, homosexual, you know, yeah, uh, and he he was classed as being a highly promiscuous gay activist. Okay, right, you know this guy is he, he's flipping both sides of the coin here. Okay, okay, now this gets better. In 1982, the 7th of June, right, an MP from Scotland signs in, right, to use the sauna. And to abuse boys in the sauna Jesus. of an infamous South London guest house called Right. Oh, you're back. See that, see that the name of the guest house again and carry right. on. Right. There's a big scandal in the eighties of, of a rent boy racket in, in an El called Elm Guest House. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Right. Three MPs were named. Sir Peter Morrison. Cyril Smith and Nicholas Fairburn. Nicholas Fairburn was named as being, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is ever what would you call it? A user, an attendee oh, okay. of this of this um, gay liaison place. Okay, and and the information was that he would use young boys in the sauna. Okay, and evidence was gathered from the from the infamous list that that went on to to form a big uh, government inquiry um, operation. Oh, it comes to me in a minute. A major major inquiry in which many many uh, politicians were named and, and and leading actors and all sorts. Yeah, and uh, and on that list is Nicholas Fairburn. Okay, so he's at this time. It's nineteen eighty two. So we jump from his from his gay shenanigans in the sixties to his womanizing in the seventies, um, molestation in the seventies, to his use of young boys, underage boys, most of them that come from the care homes. It's freaking crazy. Yeah, really and he's is. and he's linked in with Cyril Smith, Sir Peter oh, Morrison. Yeah. Sir Peter Morrison, very very well known, right? And uh, I think Sir Peter Morrison was something to do with the social services, and um, and he's also having an affair. With a person who set up child line, Esther Anson. Yeah, that's the, the, the child line thing is concerning. Now, the uh, the recent inquiry, right, into Four Neathy Girls Home, right, there was the girl said that they would be drugged and they'll be taken to a posh house and there will be men that smelt of tobacco and, and pipes and cigars and and all that. The oh. girls are made to walk around in just a bra. Young, young girls are talking little yeah, primary man. school up with those girls. And they oh, would yeah. be up, they would be abused and hard. We know what the R word. So this was yeah. um uh, PDF files that were in now. Right. The girls, 15 girls were interviewed and shown pictures of abusers. Out of the 15, six of them pointed out their abuser as being Sir Nicholas Fairburn QC. Okay. Sir Nicholas Fairburn QC was then later accused of aring a girl from the age of four. And oh. this girl was the daughter of the second most prominent QC in Scotland, a man called Bob Henderson QC. Now, that may or may not mean anything to you just yet, but I'm sure this will come. Who is Bob Henderson? Fairburn and Bob Henderson. Okay. They, call, they called him, a.k.a. Shiny Bob. And, and I'll explain All the right. reason who this guy is. Right. Now, Fairburn's roles. He was a Conservative Member of Parliament for Perthshire. He was Solicitor General for Scotland. His duties were to advise the Scottish government. He was responsible for the Crown Office and, and um, Procurator Fiscal, 
the CPS of Scotland. He was their advisor. He was a senior advisor to the government, not the Scottish government, the government. And and the roles, his roles, what come under his jurisdiction was to investigate and prosecute criminal offences as well as sudden deaths and suspicious deaths. It was his final say what happened to investigations, murders, deaths and sudden deaths. Okay? Okay. And there was an investigation was done, was started on uh, uh, for wrongdoing by for Nicholas Fairburn and for Bob Henderson, both QCs, right? Yeah, it, was yeah. late, it was later dropped to the investigation and a Labour Party MP, uh, the justice spokesman at the time was a man called Graham uh, Perron, asked why any findings... Um, why they were shut down, and, and he said that these findings, what they did have, showed powerful persons were involved. Yeah, I mean, right? there's no other way of explaining it. You, you know, so we we, we get we're getting into into very very murky territory now. Um, you know, we we're, we're sort of um, really moving forward, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Into, into who this fellow is, right? Now his colleague. His buddy, his oppo, is is running pal, Bob Henderson Q, QC, A.K. Shiny Bob, born the 29th of March 1937, and he died the 9th of December 2012. Again, we're going to give this guy a good kick, and he deserves it. This man is a, a PDF file, you know. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, so born in Glasgow, and what happened to him? Sent to a boarding school, right? This is where, he, and he become an associate and a close friend of Nicholas Fairburn. He worked as a junior partner for a law firm called Burnett Walker. And the firm did get um, investigated and suspected of fraud, mortgage fraud, money laundering, and money laundering for the mafia. And he was a senior partner for it, okay? <clears throat> the, other, the other senior partner was a guy called Ian Walker. And, and uh, during the investigation, the Sun newspaper got involved. And, and halfway through it, Walker hung himself outside his office. So okay. something very something was serious. Going on there, yeah. Something was going yeah. on there. So so th this does start tying in very nicely with, with, with these care homes in a minute. Um there was another investigation going, it's always going on at the same time. This is throughout the eighties now. There was uh an investigation called the Magic Circle, and it involved the Scottish justice system. Right, and this started off with um, uh, the gay scene in Edinburgh and judges that were circuit judges, Crown Court judges were involved because back then it, it was outlawed. All right, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it soon moved on to rent boy rackets, and it was the solicitors and the judges and the QCs that were involved in, in rent boys, right? And it was massively, massively covered up. Now, one of the guys was a guy called Colin Tucker. Um, Barrister again went on trial for fraud, and Tucker was actually being blackmailed by persons unknown for being gay. So Tucker, then under the instructions of his barrister Bob Henderson, was asked to write a list of all the other barristers involved. It got known as Tucker's List. Okay, and it was a list of list. all Tucker's List. Yeah, and uh, as a result of this list, the senior judge of Scotland at the time, Lord De Vere. De Vere. Lord De Vere, uh, you know, the judge, recorder, whatever, one of the top ones in Scotland, he resigned. And there were five other senior judges in, in, in Edinburgh and, and in the environs that were on this list. Okay? okay. And Henderson, Bob Henderson, used this because he had very strong connections high up in the police to blackmail people. He went on a huge blackmailing spree armed with this information, okay? And uh, it, it linked him with judges and criminals. And as a result, he managed to manipulate the system and get everyone to help him out. So he's a really nasty, spiteful piece of work. Yeah. And Bob Henderson yeah. was, was pimping out his four-year-old daughter to other barristers, one of which is Nicholas Fairburn. Jesus. Now, he's a top QC... He's given the, the job of, of representing another barrister involved in Red Boy Rackets. He's given the job of it. 
and with that information he can now start bribing police officers criminals other judges and of judges. course i mean it's 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 the definition of rising to the top in this syndicate yeah. in this yeah group and a young a young girl went missing and was never seen again and she was linked to a, a, a place a street in central edinburgh called palmerston place and palmerston place was the epicenter of this rent boy racket henderson was also accused of running brothels and involved in doing likewise with Nicholas Fairburn. So yeah. what sort of dogs are we caught up with, you know, here? But the police did look into it. And and there's a, a very, very brave officer. It went it went known as uh, Operation Planet. And it was looking at boys from care homes and runaways, right? Nine of these boys gave statements, right, as to what was going on. Out of the nine, five died suspiciously. Five. I don't even know what to say to that, John. Like, I mean, how has this gone on for so long? Like, but, what, but, I mean, but but look at what I was dealing with when I was in the Metropolitan Police. It's the same thing. Of course it is. And I was told by a senior officer, shut the F up. You don't know who or what you're dealing with. Yeah. And then I was told by someone else, this goes right to the top. And I think we're near to the top with this. I think we're yeah. pretty much as far as we can get, mate. You know, I mean, it is... Listen, there's a, there's a bit more I need to go through, but yeah, yeah, when we're course. looking at the scale of of S abuse yeah. in children's homes in Scotland, and it was given to Lady Smith. I'm going to go on about her to look at. Lady Smith was friends with these people. She didn't, after eight years, make one recommendation. The school where kids were genitally mutilated and, and gang hard and gang beaten yeah. and urinated on, and, 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 you know, there was one account where... Uh, there was a hole dug full of full of excrement and urine, and kids were regularly shoved into it. Oh, instead of instead yeah. of publishing the findings of that, she published the comments, the positive comments from their website. And kids were dying. Kids were dying. So when we say, "Oh, they're all covering it up," this this is the people covering it up. Yeah. Right. Henderson would hold parties and pass his young daughter around. Oh, Susie. See. Susie and and uh, another guy that was involved was a guy called Watt. Um, what's it? What's his other name? Something. What was it? Um, John Watt. Right now, this gets interesting. John Watt, another solicitor, barrister, QC from this elite Edinburgh Chambers yeah. cesspit. You know, yeah, hundred um, percent. What not only. Uh, was was a good friend of Henderson, and he also was molesting and are in Henderson's young daughter Susie. He also was abusing young boys, and he ab abused and he are a young boy called Mark Thompson. And Mark Thompson bravely did come forward, and so did Susie Henderson. And and uh, what um, there was four victims of what four child victims of what? So yeah. the guy's a PDF file, yeah. Um, and he was given ten years for what, what he did. Henderson got away with it. Ten years he was given. Um, now, what's interesting is there's there's another senior, senior, senior judge okay. called, called Lord Hardy. And Andrew Rutherford Hardy, Baron Hardy, Lord Hardy, born 1946, advocate depute, head of the CPS from 1979 to 1983. He was head of the chambers where John Watt, who's Henderson's best mate and friends with Rutherford, and John Watt, another barrister, was abusing little Susie and this poor lad and, and two other kids. It is just well, rife. I well, mean, it's well, the echelon. Well, well, this is really weird, right? Because a report was sent through to Lord Hardy and told this is what's, what's going on. Yeah. He concealed it. He covered it up, but but he was he was like the mentor, right? Okay. The trainer of John Watt. I guess get, I don't know if you, anyone in the legal world might know this. Guess what they call a senior barrister who 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 sort of puppy walks and and, and mentors the younger ones. Their yeah. their official term is the devil master. It, okay, see the, that, the, that, that it, we're, we're in the in plain sight realm now rubbing it in yeah. your face in plain sight you know what i'm saying the devil master 
That's his official term because he trains other barristers. He's known as the devil master. And listen, this is something, look, this is really strange. This is some of the investigations that come out. This is um, feudal. Yes, this is exactly. archaic, right? Hardy, Lord Hardy, was his, because he was the advocate de depute for the CPS, and he was the top of the tree. This is as high as you can get in the legal thing. He become the senator, the, the senator colleague of justice was his term. The senator colleague of justice, right? Okay. Now, that might just be a term, but when you look at it, right, he's covering up child abuse. We don't know if he's an abuser or not. We're not going to go down them lines of saying things we don't know, but we can draw inferences here. But he's covered up, officially concealed, horrific top of the tree child abuse and and everyone around lord hardy is smelling bad as well right of course now he is senator now with with the with the rank of senator colleague of justice it is treason under the treason act of 1708 still in place today to kill lord hardy whilst he's in post as the senator in exercise of the office of scotland and that's still in force now right still in force now Okay. So if you kill this guy, it's not murder, it's treason. You'll be hung. Oh, wow. You'll be hung. Now, what did Lord Hardy uh, preside over? Oh, he was wow. the, lead, the lead investigator for the Lockerbie Inquiry. Okay. Now, See, now it's, it's undeniable when all these individuals are into these things and work in such close proximity. This isn't an accident. No, no, no. What is weird is the um, the Lockerbie inquiry. I, I had an informant uh, in the police who uh, was in the Scottish justice system. He was in the prisons, and I used to go to Scotland. I visit quite a lot of prisons in Scotland, and I've done intelligence interview in there. Right, and uh, I was told about Abdul El Megrahi. Okay. And I was told by this guy that Abdul El Megrahi never, never, and they knew it. The system knew it that he was not the Lockerbie bomber. He was an intelligence asset for the yeah. intelligence services. And and I said, did he get a hard time? Because he was in Sockton prison, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he said, did he get, he said, no, John, he'd never got a hard time because everyone knew. He said he was a really nice man. And he said, uh, but no one could get near to him. He said, I got near to him because I could get messages to him in the mosque. He would be uh, chaperoned by two guys everywhere he went. But in the mosque, there was sometimes these, uh, odd opportunities where you could get near to him. Okay. And he said, and everyone liked him. He says, a really nice guy. And they all knew he didn't do it. And he said, he openly said, I'm, I was waiting for the government. I was helping them and, and they've stitched me up. You know, and, 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 and Lord Hardy would have known this. I would have thought, I know it. So yeah. why wouldn't he have known it? So now we're going on to another head of the justice system, a colleague of all of these, a colleague of the whole lot of them, right? She gets given the job to preside over the Scottish Abuse Inquiry. <laughs> Her name is Lady Smith, right? She's born in the 6th, 16th of March, 1955. Went to Edinburgh University, as they all do. Become a QC in, in uh, 1993. And she yeah. become advocate depute. Advocate depute, okay. There. So she, she takes on this role, right? in 2000 to 2001, she only lasts a year. And uh, she was also the chairman of the Scottish Partnership on Domestic Abuse during the same period of time. So she sits all the cases for domestic violence come her way. And we've got to think about this. Okay, yeah, we Survivors do. of abuse have got a propensity to either get caught up in or perpetrate domestic violence, right? Because of the yeah. horrors they've been through, right? The damage, the rejection. And, and, and domestic violence perpetrators tend to be people that have suffered uh, rejection, especially by the mother. And we found that with Bob Henderson, our, our piece of the QC that, that, you know, who was the, who used to R his own daughter and get others to do so. Um, he would beat his children and, and, and his wife. These are damaged, damaged people. So, you know, th this woman was in charge of the inquiry where it's also incestuous and linked in and they have their governance. They're the ones that can open and shut the doors and they, they're the deciders whether justice is ever given. And I feel sorry for anyone who yeah, comes under the umbrella of these people that, that are 
waiting and trusting the Scottish justice system because it's not going to deliver. Oh, I'm telling you now, while you've got people like Lady Smith, right? She tried to bully the BBC, right? Because they were going to expose her as a bully. She had a history of bullying, right? She was she was up a few times on allegations of bullying. And under her, the, the, the BBC were looking at corruption and cover-ups regarding the SCAI, the Scottish Abuse Inquiry. Okay. One of our junior members, uh, he was so sick that zero recommendations were made in the eight years that she was in. So she came up of eight years of looking at the abuse, which we've seen, which we've just gone through some of it. We'll go for a bit more in a minute. Yeah. She came up with zero recommendations. He decided to write a book about it because she tried to bully him into silence because he spoke out. And because the BBC got hold of it, she tried to bully them as well, you know? And yeah. uh, she tried to silence them because this guy who wrote the book, John Halley, was going to expose her. And lo and behold, Lord Hardy as well. Yeah. As being members of the Scottish senior Scottish establishment there. Wow. So, you know, me and you, if we yeah. don't pay our um our congestion charge our council tax whatever uh, yeah. we don't stand up for our community service we got a prison yeah look look at this lot what they're doing these are the lawmakers and they are the main lawbreakers right so she lady smith is in charge of the scottish abuse inquiry now that now these people we mentioned now we've been going on about murderers yeah there's no difference in the profile of Nicholas Fairburn and that that of, of uh, Brian Fields and maybe Sidney Cook, I can't see any difference in them, right? Okay, I mean, there's um, a lot of similarity. I mean, like it's, it's really just upbringing and status that separates them. Yeah, and and one's privileged and one isn't, right? Yeah. Now, now here's the other thing: because of what they've done and the access, the unfettered access they would have had to children in care how many of those survivors killed themselves now is oh. that not indirect murder in my opinion man of course murder? of course you know, that, they, uh, and then when justice is asked for their pal lady smith jumps in and they don't get any yeah. and then when the kids go to child line to esther ranson's beloved child line who knows i mean we're just drawing parallels here there is more parallels here to child abuse an institutional systemic child abuse that, that then we could draw between Sydney Cook, Brian yeah. Fields, and all the, the rest of Perverts United, you know. So I'm just going to go on about the Scottish system. It's different. The Scottish, I've researched this, it's been fascinating. Unlike the English, the Scottish. Um, Hang on one second, my phone's ringing. Just keep going, John. Okay. Right, I'll carry on. The, the Scottish did not like children going away from them into boarding schools. The English loved it. The Scottish didn't. The Scottish didn't like to divest their children away right. from the maternal influence. Okay? So, if a parents went in prison, Scottish, the children tended to go with them. But they, okay. weren't, they weren't places for children because if children went into the Scottish prisons in the dark days of the 18th century, they would suffer mental health problems. They weren't really nice places. But the Scottish had a cohesive family um, a mentality, whereas the English tended not to have. Okay. But that changed. The religion changed that. The Catholic Church changed it. Now, the Catholic Church didn't have a bigger stronghold as a Protestant church in Scotland. Okay. Right. But it had to step in in 1840 because there was a massive influx of Catholic kids to Scotland. All right. And do you know, do you know why? No, oh, tell me. The Irish potato famine. Okay. The kids legged it. Of course. And of course that made sense. So uh, the West Coast... Glasgow was was absolutely inundated with, with starving Irish kids. Um, and then they were put into these Catholic institutions, right? And, and so there was things like the Daughters of Charity of St. Vincent de Paul, the Sisters of Nazareth, the Congregation of Christian Brothers. Doesn't it sound so benevolent? 
Oh, it sounds, doesn't sound suspicious in the slightest. No, not, not at all. It, it warms you inside, doesn't it? Now, <laughs> now, these side orders of Catholicism, yeah, we've just got to follow the money, right? right. They don't. 80% of all Catholic orders, like, some, I want to go on about St. Vincent de Paul because I want to know how things decline, right? Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Saviour, he come from Nazareth. And he warned in the book of Matthew, Mark and Luke that anyone who harms a child, anyone who does it, it is better they put a millstone around their neck and jump into the depths of the sea. Yeah. Right. He's yep. telling them, you work kids, top yourself. That's what he's saying, Jesus, because he, he couldn't stand children being hurt. Yet these dogs have piggybacked on his name. They've not just given the kids a hard time. They've gone worse than that. This is where we start to see women who abuse. And we're going to cover that in, in a very interesting bit in a second. It's highly interesting. It is probably okay. one of the most interesting things I, I've ever looked at. But these well, orders, like Vinnie de Paul and the Sisters of Nazareth and the, the pedo Christian brothers or whatever, they're, they're interesting because they do not come under the governance of the Vatican. So there is no auditing of these people. There is no adjudication. There is no ombudsman. There's nothing. So they go unfettered. There is no, uh, you know, do you know what I mean, curtailing of their behaviour if it goes awry. They do not get inspected for the whole term of their existence. Yeah. And this is dangerous. So, the is. Catholic... I mean, yeah, no, no, carry on, John, sorry. Right, the Catholic orders, right? I'm going to give you a list of, of what was reported to them, what kids endured. Okay. Regular beatings, daily beatings with leather straps, hairbrushes, and crucifixes. Jesus. I mean, the, 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 I wear my crucifix, right, because it, it reminds me of the suffering of Christ, but unlike the Catholic one, uh, where's mine? You know, he rose again on this one, right? This is a symbol of hope and of love and, and of faith. They use this to beat little kiddies. Yeah. And they're, they're people of God, right? When when they did the, the investigation, when the SCIA actually, not, not Lady Smith, but her foot soldiers, who I would have thought some would have been ex-coppers and that did a good job, they found that the children experienced no love, no comfort, no compassion, and no dignity. Their abusers were priests, trainee priests, nuns, and staff. So everyone, and there was one, the Smilem Park Orphanage in Lanark, right? They were told, dig up the grounds. Oh, God. They dug up the grounds. 400 children's bodies were found. 400. 400. 400. Oh. What, what went on there, right? Right. The, the, congreg the Congregation of Christian Brothers, they took it another step forward, right? Under their schools... Kids suffered electric shocks, brutal beatings, whippings, pushing into holes filled with urine and excrement, made to eat vomit. One boy, his hand was put in a vice and crushed by one of the brothers. It went gangrenous, it was ignored, and eventually it had to be amputated. That was seen as lawful chastisement, you see? Uh, it's, it's just so twisted. It's so it's so twisted that now again we look at the boarding schools. The main yeah. one that that cropped up the survivors was Loretto in Musselburgh. Smith refused to post negative comments, and the public insisted that the remit regarding this school be extended. And both Lady Smith and Nicola Sturgeon stepped in and said, "No, they're not going to do it. They're not going to do it." I mean, but how so, how do the people around these people not? I like attempt to step in. I mean, do they just get silenced? I would imagine they, they just get silenced. And and that and if you look at it, um, the the Fornisi home, it, it was gifted to um, the uh, the Glasgow City Council in 1963. It was in the middle of rural Perth. If we look at the the quarriers' homes in the west coast, mainly around um, uh, Glasgow, where where this quarrier guy, this philanthropist. That they were made up of philanthropists, doctors, mill owners, merchants, and estate owners, but they were getting funding for the government, yeah. right? And, and, and of course they didn't. And the poor laws had, had stepped in and said that any child under 40 need, needed to be catered for uh, because of, you know, there was an economic slump in the 1880s in Scotland. Um, uh, 
uh, initially, see, Scotland parents needed to be needed consent for whatever did with their kids because mm -hmm. of the church and their intervention. That was later on in the nineteenth century. That was removed. So, so the the government took over because of the church, and parental consent was no longer needed in Scotland. And Scotland went on to witness some of the worst abuse. It just shows um, you, though. It just shows you how they've used religion as a tool. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And they made it sectarian as well. They made it sectarian. So the, the, the children were made to work from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. from the ages of five. Yeah. And there was a cruel regime, exercise, punishment. The, 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 the nuns lacked any form of tenderness. Um, again, they set up things called industrial schools to try and teach the kids trades and all that. Yeah. Um, but the same thing happened. That slid that's it and um down at the girls are sent to asylums or what they called lock hospitals to, to prevent child prostitution and and sexually transmitted diseases and again it just it slid away and and the overall result was that very few kids benefited oh, the, the children lost their identities there was unyielding rules procedures and regulations and uh and many many suffered uh, cruelty and serious abuse of of, of all sorts, and that's yes. you know the, the main time. So the inquiry, uh, you know, looked at it from from the sixties through the nineties, but it did extend to the nineteen fifties to two thousand ten, and sixty percent of all reported abuse took place in faith based based institutions, and most of that was s abuse. Most wow. of it. The majority of the abusers were men, 90% uh, were men and 10% were women. Now, that doesn't mean that that's what was reported and there's a yeah, reason why women aren't reported. And um, if I can concentrate on the four Neethi home, really, and the women that went on to abuse, and it's really interesting because women tend to abuse younger victims. Women do not discriminate against gender. And... and the psyche of an older woman is there's a need for, for admiration, right. right? There's a need for it. And they have an exaggerated sense of self-importance. Uh, and there's a lot of jealousy. Now, when I spoke with Corinne, I said, Corinne, this is fascinating me, this women abusing. Why? And she said, are you on about institutions? I went, yeah. She said, John, a lot of the nuns, a lot of the women were forced into the convents. They didn't want to go. They were forced in. They suffered badly. Yeah. And what and, and what happened is they never had children. Okay, there were cases of them having children because there was promiscuity with the priest. Yeah. Right. But because they didn't marry, didn't have a normal family life, uh, they were unloved. Um, they took out their hatred on children. And she said the same as the report said that they picked on young children. And so anything that had life and laughter in it, they were jealous of it. And and their hatred was was you know met out Sorry. their misery and hatred they met out and if a woman is abused she's four and a half to six times more likely than a man to abuse her own children and others children yeah the statistics are horrifying yeah 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 and and, and women are more financially driven now this is interesting because these girls in the Forneathy home, these posh white men would come during the day, look round the schools and would point at certain girls and they were picking them out for parties. And of course, they were paying for it. They were making money out of it. So it was a massive racket, a pimping yeah. racket. Yeah, 100%. And again, th th this one sort of blown my mind a bit, John, because it's... It's how these old people all interlink and how the system is well and truly planned out. It, it and you, you bring it in the religion side as well. It just it, it paints a really grim reality. I'm not going to lie. Oh, it's, it's shocking. It's yeah, shocking. shocking. And, and then you've got the public perception of these places that these are holy individuals. Yeah. These are very near to God. They would never do it's that. The it's the trust and the manipulation. The, the trust and the lies is is horrific. It's a yeah. game, and especially with women because they won't report it because people don't think that women would do it and the police wouldn't take these reports seriously. But female offenders 
are more likely to abuse fostered or adopted children than men are. Wow. Female um, female offenders prefer female victims, although they don't tend to discriminate, but they prefer them. Yeah. Okay. Um, female offenders are victims of abuse themselves. Majority of them are victims of men. It's maybe some are, some are predominantly okay. are, but female abusers would have come from abuse themselves. Uh, they they are three times more likely to pick on children with disabilities. Okay, and and uh, a victim um, in these homes is twice as likely to be abused by a woman. Isn't that you know absolutely um, you know and uh, there's they reckon when they studied a lot of them, um, fifty percent of the, of the women had mental health issues and alcoholism and substance. Yeah, abuse. I mean, I would. I would definitely say that goes without saying. The statistics are horrific, and it, it's a lot to take in, John. You know, when when you're, you're putting this information forward, because we obviously know about the system we're referring to and the secret PDF file uh, cabal, shall we say? Yeah. But it's the undeniability of these stories when you start seeing how many of them are surrounding each other in these high places. It's, it, it, it's it's incredible, you know that we can tie in Esther Ransom, we can tie in Margaret Thatcher. Yeah. I mean, the, the inquiries have already done this; they've already done this. Yeah. But if you look at, you know, again, we look at the church and, and what the nuns do. But what about Esther Ransom? People looked up to her, and she ran. Now, now we, we've not made direct allegations against her, you know, and and we, course, we're yeah. not in a position to do so. But if we were to look at guilty by association, it yeah, starts to yeah. smell. If I was vetting someone, I would say, well, how come you're hanging around with this person? What's going on? Yeah. Well, know? that's it. It's not by chance. You know, this is an ongoing thing and you're still there. And then we, we look at the level they got to when we look at Lord Hardy, yeah. Lady Smith. Well, it's the top. Nicholas Fairburn. They are at the top. Bob Henderson. He you know, links with the Mafia. Yeah, and and access the unlimited access to children in care, and we look at key accounts like uh, Fornithi. One woman came forward and set up a blog. Within months, hundreds and yeah. hundreds were flooded. You know, and the, the, with all the Scottish homes, it's yeah, it, it tends to be the case when someone steps forward, the floodgates kind of open. And uh, make sure you uh, smash the like button, people. Make sure you're subscribed. Uh, and once again, apologies for about the camera this evening. It will be rectified, and uh, for having to put up with me having a splitting, splitting headache. It's been uh, it's been one of those days today. Sadly, I need to drink but, more water. Yeah, yeah, this is giving me a headache. It's giving me heartache. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. this is look, when, when we talk about how did this happen? Who are the people at the top? We've done it tonight. We've done it. Yeah. We, well, that's uh, and, and uh, you know, watch this space with the Scottish care home system because it's it's exploding as we talk. Yeah. It's not going to stop. Uh, we, we can talk about Fairburn Henderson, they're dead. But while they were alive, the huge, huge cover-ups by the institution, there was um, a very, very, very brave um, police officer. I can't recall his name. He he was uh, a detective. He was exposing all of this. And uh, he, he was silenced the same way, the same, exactly the same way. Yeah, and, you know, it's real and your testament to the realities of what happens when good men try and fight the powers that are doing these horrific things you know yeah. it really is i mean so, so if we look you want to look up operation planet um the magic circle because it was called the magic circle because things would magically disappear you know um yeah, Charlie Charlie Orr was the detective. Charlie Orr, Northern and Borders. Uh, what a brave man! O double R, uh, what incredible guy! And he he stood his ground, threatened exactly the same way as me and, and many others. Uh, papers missing. Uh, it, it was brilliant. I mean, the BBC uh, did a good documentary on it. Um, they do do some good stuff every now and then, uh, but it, it's it's just. It's mind blowing. It's mind blowing it what went on in Scotland, uh, especially throughout the seventies and the eighties, and, and with the legal system, it was a 
very, very dirty place to be. And of course, what do they, they class these people as? Oh, you know, like Fair Burnell is an eccentric because he would turn up to Parliament in the kilt. Yeah. And his love of malt whiskey. Oh, he's an eccentric, that chap. Yeah, he's a, he's a bit of a character. Bit of a character, yeah, yeah. Bit of, yeah, bit of a tad. Yeah, don't trust him with your grandmother. He's a bit of, you know. Yeah. But these people would stick it in anything. They'd do a plate if they had a crack in it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> they are dogs. And they yeah. adjudicate over us. And they yeah. cover up, and and these are kids that came from the East End of Glasgow. They come from Govan, the Gorbals, and they were put there. They came out of poverty. They went back. No one would believe them anyway, you know. And how many of them went back into these impoverished areas, harboring the baggage of the abuse that they went through, and, and they went through and committed suicide. I yeah. bet it's through the roof. Mental health, drug addiction, medication, and suicide, yeah. all because. Of, of Fairburn and Co. and the Sisters of Nazareth and the Pope's little helpers and, and who else decided to have a go. Yeah, it's it's horrific. And once again, you know, you put this over to us, John. I think we're all going to have to sort of go away and process this one because uh, it was it was massive. And you know, make sure you guys are subscribed. Make sure you subscribe to to John's uh, channel. And John, just before we wind up, is there anything else you want to you want to say on this? No, uh, you know. It's, Go through it, listen again. Listen again to what yeah. we said. You know, don't just do it in one hit. Go back and check out these characters. That's what I do. I check them out, Google them. And, yeah, and you right. see. Do your own these, investigation, people. That's exactly it. Shape your these, own opinion through investigation. These are the, the cream at the top. And uh, this could have brought down the whole of the Scottish establishment. It could have come crumbling down. And I no doubt the equivalent occurs in the UK and maybe it goes higher. And it actually does go to the crown. Who knows? We've we've definitely seen it with one of the uh, our, our princes here. How he's linked up high up. So yeah. Well, only time will tell on how much of the truth will surface, and hopefully, uh, good men like yourselves and the other officer or continue to to fight the fight. And uh, as always, John, thanks so much for being here, and thank you all of you for watching. We've got. Uh, 200 on uh, YouTube and 535 on Twitter. So big shout out to Twitter tonight. You guys won. I will see you all tomorrow lunchtime for uh, a Royal News Flash and then in the evening for a Royal Mess with uh, some special guests. So come and check us out. And thank you all for putting up with my poor performance this evening. I'm going to go and eat a packet of Nurofen and pass out. So thank you very much. John, you're a legend. Thank you everybody in the side chat and I'll see you all in the next one.